Howdy folks, Cal Dittmar, Trap and Fool, out in the fur shed. Today I'm going to show you how to flush a coon and put it up. Uh, first thing you want to do after you skin them is get them brushed out. I brush them out a lot of times before I skin them too. Get the big burrs and stuff out of them. Any burrs in them will, is where you can nick the hide at. Uh, I've already brushed this one out. I'm going to go ahead and flip it inside out here. The other thing you need to do is split the tail, which usually I do that when it's hanging, but I didn't do it this time because I wanted to show you guys how to do it. You can do it on the board here too. I'm going to focus on the coon here and what I'm doing instead of on me again. Hopefully, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'll keep an eye on the, everything here. All right, you'll need a tail stripper. You can use a knife too, but this tail stripper is what I like. When you've got the tail out, just hook it in on the bottom side. And of course, I wasn't holding on to it good enough there, but split it right down. It went all the way through, bumping the camera. Jeez, oh Pete, I'm off to a good start today. All right, now what you'll do, put it up here. I usually have a flushing rag that I'll use that I can lean against, keeps the hide from slipping, and flushing knife. I use a Necker 600. Uh, everybody has their own preference. This is what I've used for years, so I just kind of stick with it. I might get another one. There's a buddy of mine that told me to try one, and I might try it kind of like the handles because they're a flatter one. But anyways, to each your own. Everybody has their own preferences. There's not one right way and one wrong way to do this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up just a little bit here. Hopefully I don't get in the way here on it. Readjust a little. The head here, there's two sides to these knives. One's the sharp side, one's the dull side. The sharp side is what you're going to use on the back here. Always make sure this hides tight and I start at the ears. This is a calloused up thick spot on these that's hard. You have to use a sharp side. And I'm just putting a little bit of pressure here, moving it on down. And you can see it's nice and white under there. That's the hide. Fat and cartilage is all coming off here. Once you get down to about right in here somewhere, it gets a little bit softer. You get out of that cartilage or gristle on the backs of their necks here. And that's where I flip the knife over to the dull side and push it right on down. I've done a few of these so I know where it usually ends. And actually, if you see, it's in between the legs. It's usually where that gristle ends and it gets easy to go. The bellies of these things are real thin hide. I do not recommend using the sharp side on those. Use the back. Let me move this out just a touch here so you can see how this is going now. This was a snared coon. And this is a very important thing here, too, the snares. You can see the snare line right here. Depending on how hard that animal fought in the snare, that could be a weak point. So when you're fleshing, they can tear right there real easy. Basically what I've done here is I'm going each side of the tail right down the tail now. And if you notice, I'm still on my dull side if you can see that. the tail I'm not putting a lot of pressure in there because you can pop it off of there so I'm gonna set them away all right we're down on one side here now what I do is I flip over tuck it in like so and I'll start over again right here at the ears right about under the chin here is where it gets thin you can actually see the thick thicker spot here thin spot there should be about good yep moving right on down now 
kind of get around the legs a little bit. See, I'm kind of working the knife around it there. Now on the bellies here, you're going to come to the teats. Which is a spot where you can rip the hide again. This is a... Come on. Stretched out on me, making me work here. Alright. Again, I'm going to go over to the side here. You're going to have to take a little bit of this down with the sharp side here. Make sure it's tight. I use the back side here to pull down to tighten that hide. Now I can get cut around here. I just flipped. If you missed that, I flipped back over to my dull side. All right. Here on the belly. Let's see if I can get, I'm trying to get one cleaned out here so you can see. Normally, actually I'm going to go ahead and finish this down. Once I have a line started down, I follow it all the way down. And on bigger hides, sometimes you need to pull them up a little bit to finish them out. So you're not getting stretched all the way across the board here. Alright, I wanted to show you here right here on the belly. This is the belly now. You can see the teat. There's a teat here, 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 here. Should be a couple more. But anyways, when you get to those, very little pressure because that is where you will rip it. You can see it right here. And it's a little bump. And what happens is if you're using that sharp side, even the dull side, you run over that, it balls up there and will just cut. So go easy with the knife. Just a little bit of pressure on the belly. Doesn't take a whole lot to get that belly off of there. All right. Just clean this down just a little bit here. Pretty much done right now. A couple other spots, just kind of touching it up is all I'm doing right now. Normally I wouldn't have those touch-up spots, but because I'm trying to get and teach her, I had them there. Alright, that's it on that. Let me clean everything up a little bit here. Okay, got a stretcher here now. Take my hide. I'm going to put it like that again. I'm going to stay more on this hide here. The stretcher, what I do is I lay it on its back. I use wire stretchers, everybody again has their own choice. I've bought wood stretched furs, I've bought wire, I've sold both at auctions. I have not seen a difference in price in either of them, so it's each their own. Everybody has their own preference. Alright, what I've done here is I'm trying to get it centered here on this stretcher. That's what I'm looking at. On the back side now, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to move this up a little bit, I think, here. Hopefully you can see here. All right. Get my knife. On the tail here. Hold on. I'm moving everything around here. All right. On the tail, I'll come down a couple inches from the back. I'll punch a hole. Then I put the center hook here in here. Always go from the fur side. Fur side is where the hooks go. Wood would be different. But I don't use wood. So always go from the fur side because what happens is these can rust a little bit on here and it shows that mark. On the hide side it won't. Alright, now we got that. I'll flip that down. Or around. I gotta get a knife here. My gloves are, or towel. Hands are getting greasy I bumped the height again all right now on these tape feet I punch a hole right here in the center basically and again the hooks from the hide side what I do is I put one on this one and then I'll put one on this hook so this one will go on this hook 
again about center here poke it through from the hide side through the foot there and pull it down stretch it these feet need to be pulled through there we go now if you look you can see how it's pretty square centered in here it's a nice straight line down the center here you flip it over pretty straight line here all right we'll get back down here now what I'm doing now is I'm pulling it down I've got my trusty little stick here eight inches is about what you want at the bottom here there you go eight inches is where you want that that's where I'm gonna leave it this is it what I'll do now is I'll trim this tab off here trim these tabs off down here all right looking good all right I'm gonna readjust the camera here so I can finish this out here hopefully this will sit here for a minute without falling down let me get readjusted here again finish this out what I do then is I move it over here like so I get it down a little bit more so you can see easier here all right maybe I'll zoom in just a skosh just a skosh all right on the legs here legs get cut off pretty short here like so like so well there we go give me troubles on the I gotta back off just zoomed up too much here let me get a little more light for you guys so you can see what's going on back oh boy my light just blew out all right we'll do it this way then down here for the sight window picture window now what I do is basically here's the last teats looks like right in here usually where the junk ends if you know what I mean by the junk on the males that's as high as you want to go so usually what I do I'm going to do it backwards different but I usually start here and come around I'm going to cut just like this get that little bit of flap off of there and come around here and do the same thing follow it down just like so probably should be a little bit bigger sight window but it looks real nice and pretty right now so I'm going to leave it where it's at you can still see the hide in here looks good legs are short the chin here chin gets trimmed out usually what I do is try and come off and make it a nice little window here too nice and pretty nice and pretty like see that legs are short now sometimes it wants to bunch up here what you can do take a clothespin and put it in there just like so holds that in place now I'm gonna readjust here again the sides here what I do is I pull them down and I'll put a couple clothespins in here What that does is just holds it in place, makes it nice and level across, makes it look pretty, and it kind of pleats it up a little bit. See that little pleat in there? Looks pretty good. All right, and there you go. Back this off, turn it up a little bit here, readjust. Hold on, folks, here we go. All right, there we go. Well, let me angle this up a little more. There you go, there's a finished coon hide now. All stretched, flushed, ready to put up. I've done this in about, eh, about 15 minutes, but demonstration purposes. Usually it takes me about two minutes, three minutes to flush out a coon. A couple more minutes to put one up. So now what I'll do is I'll hang it up here. I'm just going to put it on this one for now. I've got hooks in my ceiling. I hang it by the nose there. Can you see that? that's how it hangs and the stove is right there so I've got it right above the stove so anyways 
get my gloves off here and finish up here. All right, that uh, concludes the flushing a cone and putting one up for fur market. If you have any questions or comments, drop one in the comment section there. Make sure you catch my skinning uh, video on my YouTube channel here. Actually, that coon was the one that I used for the video. Uh, that pretty much concludes everything for the fur burgers on uh, raccoons then. So there's muskrat, raccoon, and I believe I did one on beaver. And I think I've done one on coyote maybe. I know I've skinned when I haven't done the uh, put up process yet. But hope you liked the video. Be sure you hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to me. I'm always doing new videos, putting new videos up throughout the week, throughout months. I might go a week or two before I put another one up, but I try and keep one up at least every week, something I try and do, especially with seasons in. Uh, find me on Instagram at Cal's Outdoors, and find, find me on Facebook at Trap and Fool is my business page. You can also find me at www.trapandfool.com is my uh, business website. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, trap and fool out.